I just had a mock transfer and biopsy and hysteroscopy and nearly fainted. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. This is me documenting my experience with IVF. In preparation for the embryo transfer, there were three things that I needed to do. One, a uh, biopsy of my uterus to make sure that there was nothing abnormal going on. Uh, I think it was my uterus anyways. Two, a mock embryo transfer, just so that my doctor knows, is more familiar with my anatomy and is aware of any abnormalities before the actual transfer occurs. And the third, thing that they have to check out is the the actual structure of the uterus including uh, whether or not the fallopian tubes are obstructed and if there are fibroids or cysts on the inside of the uterus and the way that they do that is they just put a camera through your cervix into your uterus and that process is called a hysteroscopy hystero from uterus and scopy from camera as far as the biopsy went they told me that they were going to aspirate, quote unquote, a few cells. And it definitely felt like a lot more than just a few cells. At this point, the biopsy results have come back. And as far as I know, everything is all normal on that front. The mock transfer is very important just so that she has any notes. Uh, again, if there is something unique about my anatomy that she needs to know about before the actual transfer, because the embryo obviously is very precious and she doesn't want to risk anything when actually transferring the embryo into my uterus. Before I went to this appointment, I actually had it in my head that this was gonna be a mock egg retrieval. And I think I just am stuck on the egg retrieval step because that is the next step for me. And the idea of actually transferring an embryo seems so far in the future that I just cannot comprehend it or hold it in my mind at the moment. So when I went in for this appointment, there were some consent forms that I needed to sign, including uh, consent for a biopsy, which I'm sure that my nurses told me that there was going to be a biopsy and um, everything that I needed to know, but there was just so much information that it's hard for me to keep in mind, okay, what is happening in the next appointment? Um, that's part of why I'm trying to document each of the steps so that I have uh, a record to kind of go back to and, and something to refer, refer to. Even when I am able to write things down there's just so much going on in my life at the moment that it's 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 just difficult for me personally to keep track of um if if ivf was the only project i was doing right now it might be different but to be honest i don't i don't think it would be that different i think it's just so much information that it, it is hard to keep track of i've said this before but again it is really important that you take notes and that you keep all your notes in the same spot. I now finally have a, a box that I, I bought at Ikea specifically for IVF paperwork and it's great. It, I can be messy with my notes and I can just throw them in and I know exactly where to look as long as I'm keeping them all in the same spot. It's made a huge difference. Justin was actually in town for this appointment, which was really, really nice, especially since this was, this really was the hardest appointment yet. I know that I have said so far up to this point, you know, there's a, there's been a lot of information thrown at me, at me for IVF, for egg retrieval, but as far as emotional, physical, or otherwise pain or discomfort, there really hasn't been much beyond the discomfort of getting my blood drawn. For this appointment, I did have a negative reaction. So it was, like I said, really, really nice to have Justin there and to be able to hold his hand and look at him while this whole situation was unraveling. But before all of the chaos of me almost fainting happened, they were able to do the biopsy and the mock transfer. So for the mock transfer, they inserted a speculum into my vagina. And at this point, it's, it's nothing different than a pap smear. It's uncomfortable, but it's fine. It's, you know, done it before. Um, there were a couple of moments where she said, okay, this might be a little crampy. And it, again, was painful, not super painful, but it felt like menstrual cramps. She also took some notes. Um, I don't know what they meant, but she dictated notes and the nurse that was there helping wrote them down so that she has them to refer back to during the actual embryo transfer in the future. Next was a biopsy. She said she was gonna aspirate a few cells and uh, she said there would be a little cramping and then she asked me to cough deeply three times. Um, I think that this is kind of a trick to, to distract your 
brain from the, the pain <laughs> because uh, I didn't quite get through even the first deep cough before I was like, oh wow, that is really painful. And then I kind of weakly let out two more coughs. That was not my favorite part. Um, and I'm glad that it's over. And like I said, the biopsy came back normal. So it's just, it's just good to know. After the biopsy, there was still the hysteroscopy to do. So she told me that she was gonna be applying a local anesthetic. And um, I don't do well with numbing sensations. It, it makes me feel a little bit nauseous. Um, and obviously I don't do well with needles. So, and I wasn't expecting to deal with a needle at all that day. So I think that it was probably the local anesthetic that really kind of put me over the edge. But at some point I started to feel very clammy. My vision started going darker. And um, you know, I, I know from experience that doctors really like to have a little heads up on this sort of thing. So I, I kind of weakly said, I'm feeling faint. And she said, okay, all right, no problem, this can happen. And um, what we're gonna do is we got two out of the three things that we needed. Uh, we're not gonna move forward with the hysteroscopy and uh, we'll have to you know, schedule something else in the future. So I sat back for a while. Um, they got me ice packs. Um, Justin was there. This is a very particular sensation. Um, it's called vasovagal syncope and Basically your va vagal nerve is under the incorrect assumption that you are dying. <laughs> and so it makes you pass out. So you, you, you just kind of exit the world. Because if you're dying anyways, why feel anything? Uh, so um, with needles, my body just really thinks that I'm, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and I started to pass out. Uh, I didn't totally pass out, which is good. But um, normally for this sort of thing, it doesn't take too long for me to kind of come back. But this, this one took a long time. It was very different. Even after we left that appointment, I was still not feeling totally great for the rest of the day. I took a long nap, I was super tired. And it's possible that when this has happened to me before, it, I, it also makes me tired and I just haven't paid attention to it, but I definitely noticed it. Um, and it was, it was rough. Yeah, it was a hard experience for me. Whatever this happens to me, I already feel a little bit embarrassed by it. There's usually a reaction. Maybe somebody says, oh my God, there's running around. Um, there's a lot of attention on me and it is just, it's something that I can't control. And so it is embarrassing. Um, I know that because it's something I control, I cannot control, it shouldn't embarrass me, but it, it does. So my immediate thoughts after this were, embarrassment but I also felt like oh god like my body is doing this already it's just the beginning what if I can't cut it like what if I can't go through with the egg retrieval process what if I can't go through with IVF um, so I had some fear too on top of the embarrassment I was also feeling a little extra emotional and I think that is pretty normal as I when I pass out or almost pass out <sighs> Um, but this was an even more intense reaction than I, I normally have. Um, on top of all of that, I, uh, because of the biopsy, was bleeding a bit. So when I sat up, there was actually, I looked on the floor and there was a drop of blood on the floor, which, you know, blood doesn't really make me queasy, but I, it was just kind of another shocking thing to experience. I'm not used to seeing that. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't get hurt that often, so I don't, I don't see my blood on the floor that often. I also was feeling like, oh God, I feel like I'm on my period again, which is uncomfortable. And uh, I, it felt hot in that room. I was clammy from the whole thing. And I, I just, I felt very, very uncomfortable. And I, I continued to bleed actually, um, like spot. Um, but I would say a heavy spotting for two or three days afterwards. Unfortunately, I also did not feel super prepared for this experience. I mean, obviously the doctor's office that I go to would not expect a person to nearly faint, but I, I would have expected a little bit more of a preparation for 
this experience regardless. Um, taking a biopsy is taking a piece of me. Uh, I didn't know there was gonna be a biopsy. And I feel like that should have been made a little bit clearer. And I didn't even know what a hysteroscopy was before I went to this appointment and was signing the consent forms to consent to a hysteroscopy. So I don't know if, um, if there's just a, a general assumption that all patients, all IVF patients are looking things up and Googling things and researching things um, and preparing themselves. I don't do that. I mean, I do sometimes. I'm going to do it more often now. Or if maybe this office is just particularly busy, they just have that many patients and I fell through the cracks. I don't know what it was, but I, um, I did not have a great experience. And I hope that this is the last time that something like this happens. And I also hope that by making this video and putting this information out there that I can help someone else prepare for a hysteroscopy or um, IVF experiences in general. During this appointment, I was able to ask my doctor if it was really important that I take a supplement that had been recommended to me by the office called DHEA. I have read a little bit online that some people have a big reaction to it. And on top of that, it's quite expensive. So when I asked my doctor about this, uh, she said, oh, I didn't realize it was, it's expensive. And she kind of just said, it's not you know, necessary. So I'm just gonna skip it. There's plenty of other things that I'm taking and there's plenty of other places that I'm putting my money for this process. I also really wanted to know if um, everything that I've been doing, the supplements that I've been taking and um, not doing, you know, like I'm abstaining from alcohol um, and I'm, I'm trying to be like on the healthy track so that I can um, have the healthiest follicles, healthiest eggs, healthiest embryos eventually. And, and have as many follicles as I can have. So I was kind of hoping that we would be able to get a, another follicle count during this appointment because I don't I don't know what my count is. They've only counted the follicles the one time in April. And so I, I, I just kind of wanted a little bit of feedback on like all of this hard work that I've been doing has it been paying out, paying off. Unfortunately, the ultrasound that they were using in the mock transfer was not the same ultrasound, same type of ultrasound that they would use to count follicles on ovaries. So I was not able to get that count, but one of the upcoming appointments will get me uh, an update on that count and we can kind of see if, uh, if there's been an improvement. Now, sometime before we do the actual embryo transfer, I will have to go back in for a hysteroscopy or maybe a different procedure that is less intense, um, but they do need to check out the structure of my uterus and see the inside of it and also check out the fallopian tubes. So I'm really hoping that for that one it is actually less intense and that I don't have this vasovagal response. Fingers crossed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next one.